Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and I'm with Zian and John. Not gonna faff around. We just watched the Nintendo Direct, didn't we, guys? Oh my gosh. Oh boy, oh boy, we did. Oh, I, my thoughts are scrambling right now. Alex, just take us, take us on this journey. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing it in the same order as the Direct happened, because that's a sensible thing to do. Um, so let's start off with the first thing, which was not Xenoblade Chronicles 2-2, as I predicted. Um, it's in fact Pyra and Mithra in Smash. Now, you two, both of you I know, are big Xenoblade Chronicles fans. I... I couldn't get into number two, I'm afraid, so you two are probably far more excited than I am. I adored Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It was one of my favourite Switch games. And Wowzers. And Dion and I were watching this together, and I, I thought when they first showed Allrest, I was like, God, this is going to be uh, Rex and Smash. And then they showed more and more, and like you, Alex, I was like, is this Xenoblade Chronicles 2 too? <laughs> and then I noticed like they're, they're, they're using scenes directly from the first game, but without Pyra, and it quickly became apparent Pyra is in Smash, and they finally revealed it, and God, I... She looks perfect. And honestly, frankly, frankly, I'm I'm happy that Rex isn't here. I'm happy it's just Pyra, because I don't like Rex that much. I do like Pyra, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... So, sadly, I I, uh, I picked up Xenoblade 1 back when it came out, and I never played it, and I wanted to play Xenoblade 2 and never got into it, but the anime fan in me is so excited for this character, but I don't know anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm sorry. I thought you. I thought you were into Xenoblade too, but I, I'm afraid I must have got that wrong. I want to be. I want to be. I'm. I'm basically. Maybe this was what. Maybe this will get you in. Yeah. I'm basically into. Like this is my kind of game. I just haven't played it. Mm -hmm. It's. It's. I'm. I'm failing. Well, one thing we can <laughs> say for Pyro that we can't say for a lot of characters in different franchises is that she plays nothing like Shulk. If you look at her, they are completely different mm. characters. And when you look at some Fire Emblem characters like like Marth and uh, like Roy or whoever like that, um, they they have similarities. Whereas Pyra and Shulk, they they feel like polar opposites, and I'm all for that. I'm 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 fine with the inclusion. I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other, to be honest. I mean, it is another anime sword fighter. <laughs> I have to say it. Um, the flame but, sword, though. That's cool. <laughs> to be fair, this time around, the character themselves is a sword, so I suppose I can't argue too much. I, I think it's a fine inclusion. I just, I don't know. I, I feel I could have been more excited, but it's not tailored for me. John, you're clearly showing that there is an audience for Mithra and Pyra. So g go for it, dude. I think the cool thing, too, is like when I saw it, I, you know, I was like, oh, this is totally Rex. It's finally happening. It's what all of the Xenoblade fans have been wanting. And then it wasn't. It was something else. And like, that's the cool thing is that Nintendo is still willing to surprise us, you know, in ways that we wouldn't have we wouldn't have expected. Yeah, it's just kind of breaking those fan rules, which are always being made. Because people said that there couldn't be a Xenoblade character because we got a Rex Me costume. <laughs> and then they just went, nah, Pyra. <laughs> so I love that they do that. And also another thing is that Rex Me costume came with some Xenoblade Chronicles 2 music. It didn't come with much, is the thing though. So I adore that there's going to be some more music from that game in here. And there's going to be remixes too, which we didn't have at all with the Me costume. Um, so yeah, we're getting a lot of stuff here, and I'm frankly, I'm excited. I understand not everyone is. People want the big third-party characters. I understand that, but still, I'm pretty pleased with this. I'm glad you're pleased. Yeah, I, I think the, the last thing I want to throw into is just the fact that it's cool that we got another rep that isn't a third-party one, because for a while it kind of felt like Nintendo was just like potentially, you know, like working with all these outside sources a lot, and I think it's nice to see that Nintendo was willing to like come back home and do something that is their thing too. So it gives me hope that, you know, maybe we'll see Dixie Kong or Waluigi or, you know, one of those Nintendo characters as the next rep to or, or whenever, you know, there's, there's still hope. Yeah. I'll throw in one criticism. I think we've had a tad too many RPG reps. We've had Hero, we've had Joker, we've had Byleth, and now we've got um, Pyra. And it feels like we could get a bit more diverse with the genre rep. You're the right, genre and even Sephiroth, even Sephiroth, even Sephiroth is Sephiroth, one. Yeah. You're right. We know you just want Lip in there, John. I do want Lip in there. There's no puzzle characters. I've had enough RPGs. Give me Lip or Al. <laughs> I'm just very pleased that they didn't um, actively announce. Well, they didn't say that it isn't happening. Um, in regards to a Josh and the Giant oh, Meek right. yeah, there's still hope. <laughs> <laughs> there's still hope. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, the next item on our list is um, simultaneously kind of a surprise and at the same time not. It's Fall Guys coming to Switch. Oh, yeah. 
Ah. I'm actually really excited for this because I always wanted to have a go at, um, at, at Fall Guys, you know, the kind of typical it's a knockout kind of silly bumping around physics-based game. It just looks like fun, uh, but I could I just never got round to it, you know. I think it was free on PSN Plus or something, but I don't have that, so I couldn't play it without paying money. Um, and I just never got round to it. So the fact that it's coming to Switch, perfect excuse. I think it fits quite well, you know, the kind of pick-up-and-play thing. It's one of those announcements that makes so much sense that is almost unexciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm happy it's coming to Switch, but I gotta say, like, I, I, I feel like it just makes so much sense like this this was inevitably going to happen at some point yeah this is one of those kind of games I, I got to play it a decent amount on playstation plus and uh, it's just one of those games that it feels weird to say this but it's just so nintendo it feels like a mashup of some of the, like the best mario party mini games but you know you're able to play them online with so many people it just it fits right at home with with uh, nintendo's audience and i'm stoked i'm so excited to have this on switch i'm really pleased the next item was outer wilds which I, I fully did not expect. It's looking, I, I can't help but feel that it's looking a tiny bit rough on Switch. Probably not helped by the fact that the stream just chews through video. It always does every stream. Um, but my god, it, it, it's coming to Switch. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere. It's kind of saying something that both the Outer Wilds and the Outer Worlds look a bit rough on Switch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I haven't played this game myself, but I've had nothing but great things. People Same. say this is their game of the year. Uh, I've heard so much praise, so I I don't need to know anything about this game. I'm going to try it. Yeah, I don't want to know anything about the game. I just want to dive in and see what's cooking. I feel exactly the same. I don't know anything. The, the trailer, I felt, almost told me too much. It's just, stop. Tell me the game's on Switch and we're good. <laughs> Famicom Detective Club. What a cool out of nowhere game. Like we've never had this franchise in the West. And um, I, I actually called this almost immediately and I went, nah, it couldn't be Famicom Detective yeah. Club. And it was. <laughs> What, what, what is it? Did it come out on the Famicom? I think it, it must, it must have, I don't know. I don't know the history of this franchise. It must have started on the Famicom. Someone's going to tell, tell us it wasn't, but still though, the fact that this has come to the West after so much time, that's a cool thing. Actually, John, it started on the Satella View. Oh no. Did it actually? <laughs> I don't know. I'm making things I, up. I believed you. I could see that, though. That would make sense. It would, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those titles that felt like when, when I was doing um, one of the recent lists about games that are coming out in the coming year, I saw that was coming out in Japan, and then I saw it wasn't coming to America and was like, that game will never come over here. And, well, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> it looks really high quality, too. It does. Like, the animations are like very good and for, for like a, i guess it's a visual novel and most visual novels are pretty static like you get like portraits that are just standing there with text whereas this it's fully voiced in japanese it looks like every cutscene is animated to some degree and then some of the more elaborate ones look gorgeous yeah and then there's a red and blue version so you know you and your friends can trade <laughs> over your favorite npcs with each other <laughs> trade it's, over your waifus yeah exactly <laughs> It looks pretty dark, though. I say waifus. This this seems like a pretty dark game. Yeah, your waifus are going to die in this game. It, it looks like, at least. <laughs> oh, the next, the next game they showed off was um, Samurai Warriors 5, which I have no opinion about. <laughs> it's neat. It's a neat game. It's neat that people have played Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors, and now they, now they can play an actual Warriors. Is is it an actual Warrior? I thought it was called Dynasty Warriors, or so. There's they're all sub series. So Dynasty Warriors and and Samurai Warriors, they're all just sort of Koei Tecmo's own uh, Warriors franchises. Gotcha. Yeah, I I pretty much got nothing on that. I'm glad it's coming over, but. I'll just I'll just play Age of Calamity more if I want, and I don't really even want to play that anymore. <laughs> we can talk about that a bit later. <laughs> so. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Legend of Mana. I don't really know anything about this game at all. Uh, what I do know, though, oh, I can't stand the mixed art style. Oh. The fact that some of it is pixel art and some of it isn't. Oh, it just looked it just looks really cheap to me. I don't like it. I, I do like it, to be honest. So this was their PlayStation 1 game. And it's not the only PS1 game coming to Switch from this presentation. And uh, I, I thought it held up pretty well. Like, it, it's hard to bring um, that sort of era and put it in HD. And sometimes they just they muck it up and make it look very smooth and ugly. 
I think they pulled it off pretty well. Yeah, it's it's one of those games too that like you know there it came out in that era where they're trying new things and but you know it doesn't always translate well to the modern day. So I I, I totally get where you're coming from, Alex, where it just kind of looks it looks a little strange. But hopefully we'll get to talk about a game that um that does suit your fancy that kind of fits that art style. <laughs> well, Monster Hunter Rise. Oh no no no! Not that. That's 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 what we're talking about next, though. Isn't oh. that convenient? Yeah, new trailer. Um, I, you know, obviously we already know about Monster Hunter Rise, but oh, it does. It did get it did get the old cockles warming for me. It just the fact that they keep reintroducing old monsters that destroyed me. Like I can't even. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I've never looked at it properly spelled out but like it's kind of a fiery anteater called like volvaldion or volvalion vol 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 <laughs> volvic hashtag not sponsored no um it, it I, i'm just i'm really excited for this did this trailer do anything for you like anything new for you uh, bits okay because as someone who isn't i, I am gonna try rise but someone who's not like really into monster hunter i kind of watched this and it felt like every other monster hunter trailer yeah, unfortunately, I think a lot of the interest in the new Monster Hunter games comes from some of the smaller sort of finer details with how you battle monsters. That's not always easy to um, put through on, you know, in a trailer. And I suppose at the end of the day, most average consumers are not going to give two shakes of a monkey's tail about that. Uh -huh. But so for someone like you, so did you say that they've been sort of like bringing back a lot of classic monsters and stuff to fight? And there was one in this that vol v v uh. <laughs> um, Yeah, they just, they do this thing every time there's a new Monster Hunter game where they kind of drip feed, oh, look which monsters are coming back. And we already knew about things like the Kezu and things like that, but it's just tantalizing. It's it's fan service. It's nothing more. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. A surprise one next, Mario Golf Super Rush. <laughs> it looks perfect. It looks perfect. <laughs> Who saw a Mario Golf game was going to come? It looks so good. Good. It looks so good. It's It's been around two decades since the last console Mario Golf. We had one on 3DS, but we haven't had a proper visual jump since the GameCube. And Jesus, does this do its service. It looks fantastic. And, you know, sort of the visuals are lovely, but the thing that's got me the most excited, full stop bar none, I can't remember what it's called. I'm I'm hoping it's going to come up in the video before it reaches it. It's like Is it running on the golf course? Is yes, that, is that it's what like you're rush mode. Because that looks rush amazing. Mode, where you all play at the same time and you've all got to try you've got to get your ball into the hole first. Why has that never been done in a golf game? That's so great. Right. Yeah. Yeah, at first I was like why are they just running along on the field and then I was like, "Oh, okay." Mm. It's so much more than just golf is the thing. And I feel like we're just, we're just kind of scratching the surface of what this game's going to be. But it does feel like it's in the vein of Mario Tennis Aces as well. Because look, look, every character has their own costume. It's, they're not just wearing their overalls. They're, they're fully dressed for golf. Even Bowser is dressed up. So it just feels like they're going the extra mile with this one. And I cannot wait. It looks great. It's called Speed Golf as well. Sorry, it's just come up. I thought I'd clarify for everyone. I just It just looks great. And the fact that you get power-ups that you can use to try and get to your ball quicker and stuff like that. It's it's crazy. I, I just... I, it's Of all the things they could have added, you know, like power-ups that make your ball magnetize to the pole or something. No, they came up with an entirely new golf concept. I think it looks great. Yeah. I also find with golf, playing online feels less intuitive than something like tennis because it's turn-based. So adding these kind of modes really does incentivize you to play with other people rather than just playing against the CPU or local friends. So I, I can see this getting a lot of longevity. I love the landscapes too in, in this new Mario Golf game too. It's so pretty. Like especially the part where uh, I think Daisy is like golfing out in the woods and it's it's super moody and dark and uh, and you can see the rain, you know, like falling around her. And it's just because whenever I think of a golf game, I always just think of like wide open greens. And maybe that's not mm. always the case, but my memories are sort of clouded by that and it's nice to see some different different elements thrown into this it's something crazy too is daisy is tanned like her mario tennis <laughs> like her first mario tennis uh, render oh really so they kind of like bring you back her sarasalan roots which is really cool that's cool tales from the borderlands if the <laughs> i really enjoy the gameplay of borderlands but i've never been interested in the story or the humor so this has got nothing for me yeah I, i've heard really good things about tales from the borderlands but i don't know i i kind of got burnt out on telltale games for a while so i personally never went over yeah. to it but but i suppose it's nice that it's it's here the switch is a good fit for this sort of game there were a lot of telltale games all at once weren't there yeah yeah mm, yeah there were they definitely burned themselves out 
But at the very least, we have Borderlands the uh, this well, I think it's Borderlands Two in the pre sequel on Switch. So having this on there too, yeah, it just kind of like fills up the collection. And Borderlands One as well. Oh yeah. Okay, that's on there too. Capcom Arcade Stadium is um, available uh, maybe at the time that you're watching this. It's a load of old Capcom games, isn't it? They've done this before as well. They did this on PS3 and 360. Yeah. And I, I like that they're on Switch. And I think they even announced this in the past, but they never really elaborated what it was. Uh, but it, it's cool. It's cool to have all this stuff on the Switch. Yeah, it's fine. It's just, it's not enormously exciting. I didn't realize it was coming out today, though. We forgive you, Zeon. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> The next game on the list is Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse. Do you know something funny about this one, Alex? So, the big thing about this when it first launched on Xbox, uh, the original Xbox, is that it's built on the same engine as Halo. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, ever think, if you ever think this game looks a bit eh, just remember, it runs on the same engine as Halo Combat Evolved. I'm just pleased that we finally got a Halo game on Switch. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This is as close as we're getting for now. <laughs> does does Stubbs have multiplayer? I think, I think it so. does, oh, yeah. Oh no, yeah. come on. I, I, fir I first heard about it like a week ago and all of a sudden it's coming to Switch. I've, I, it's just bizarre. Yeah, it's always been like sort of a, a cult classic. I've never dabbled in it at all. I'm glad that people that have been missing out on it for years can finally find out what this Halo... <laughs> inspired game is all about <laughs> no more heroes 3 we finally learned a little bit more a little more what was it? they had the death glove i keep wanting to say power glove and it's clearly oh, a play yeah. on that but every every time i look at this it just looks like more no more heroes and that can't be a bad thing it looks even potentially even wackier than the first two it looks a little bit more like it's trying to be a little bit closer to the first one than the second one was but i don't know i'm thinking more about the mini games like mowing lawns yeah yeah the jobs definitely look more in line with the first game it's been really neat seeing this game go from being nothing to being yeah. a full-fledged game like it, it was it was teased in travis strikes again as this test room and it was clear that that just started development and then we got a full story trailer but it was just animated but now we're seeing the game in its entirety being properly played and it like it, it's great seeing the jump from Wii to Switch. Like the, clearly, uh, the the technical jump is huge. But as you say, it does look like more No More Heroes. But um, it seems like they're they're getting a lot more action focused. There's a lot more going on than just swinging your beam katana around. Which it, it just it looks chaotic. It looks fun, and I can't wait for this. Yeah, I'm surprised too because I mean the I I've only played the original. I watched a little bit of a let's play of the second one, and they both had so much style and flair. And I'm glad to see that they've just basically taken that and they've upped the ante on it completely and now there's these like you guys were saying a little bit there's like these new modes too it almost looked like there was a survival horror element or mini game and like a turn-based rpg one and things were just like flying on the screen so fast so many little details and part of me wants to go back and like dissect it all but we've just seen like so much at this point now but so little that i'm i'm ready to just go in and just see what it's all about neon white does anyone have any idea what was going on in this trailer? Because it looked like you were gathering cards and just walking into enemies and defeating them. I, I just, I. Is that the the first person sh or like first person one where you're just jumping around like a parkour yeah. ninja, but you're you're wearing a mask? And there's also visual novel elements in there too. I, I I'm so confused <laughs> what this game is. It's the one detail I picked up on is at the end they mentioned Ben Esposito, and I looked him up. He's the guy that made. Donut County. What? <laughs> so, like, right. how do you? What yeah, a jump! How do you go from that to this? I mean, Donut County and, is a, is a pretty dark game. I mean, everyone's falling into <sighs> in, into into holes constantly. <laughs> That's true, but it's yeah. So, I mean, if that alone has me excited, uh, and then the style as well, how everyone's wearing like a different mask. Like, are they are they part of a a game or what? What is this that's happening? I don't know. It's it looks strange though. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the gameplay looks perfectly orchestrated in the trailer, and I can just imagine myself playing that and fumbling all over the place. <laughs> DC Superhero Girls Teen Power. John, I know you're excited for this one. This was the game of the direct. I, I watched this and I a tear <laughs> rolled down my eye. Finally. <laughs> Finally, this game. No, I, this this feels like a Bakugan situation where this probably should have been its own disappointing direct. I mean, it, we're not kids, and it seems like that's what the game is geared towards. I'm, but also, we're adult kids, so. But I don't know. There's something about this that just doesn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it did anything. 
Yeah, it's um, we're, we're not the target demographic, really, are we? So I don't know how much we can really say about it. It doesn't really look like a low quality shovelware, you know, movie tie in or TV show tie in or anything like there's it seems like there's a lot of passion going into the game. But is that going to translate well to a solid game? Because some of the <laughs> some of the stuff I originally saw for Bakugan looked kind of interesting. But at the same time, we, we all know how that went down. <laughs> This looks better than Bakugan. Like, look at the, the the actual art style itself. It looks like there's some energy in there. Uh, the voice acting, too, felt very energetic. It, it looks like it could be all it right. It did, yeah. It did sound quality. That's true. And maybe if... I'm not sure if this is tied in with the show or something, but, you know, hopefully they got the, the traditional voice actors for it, too. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not... I mean, the Lego games are always good for the most part, and I know this is not one of those, but Warner Brothers, it seems like, more recently likes to take care of their... IPs a little more, I think. So we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville Complete Edition. I, I don't even really know what this... Is this like a third-person <laughs> shooter? I don't know. It is. Oh, yeah. okay. Do you know the big thing about this, though, Alex, is this game runs on the Frostbite engine, huh. which kind of implies that we could get a full-fledged FIFA. Uh, we could even possibly get Battlefield <laughs> down the line. Because this engine's never ran on Switch before. Every FIFA on Switch gets its own engine based off the previous gen versions. So the implications of this are pretty vast. I must admit, I'm fairly certain they weren't using Switch footage. I mean, I'd love to be proved wrong, but I don't think they were using Switch footage in the Direct. Mm. Did it look Possibly too good? Not. Too good to be true? It did a little, didn't the it? The lighting is just, it's too precise. The shadows are all really crisp. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely, 100% love to be proven wrong here, but it did not look like Switch footage to me. It's not early in development, though. It's out on March 19th, which oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty wow. soon. So it'd be, it'd be weird to, you know, to give you misleading footage that close to release. Now EA's been kind of working on, I mean, I, I, they're different companies, but like Criterion, um, they worked with for uh, Burnout and or whoever, you know, ported that over to Switch. Maybe they've got some port ninjas over there of their own working on something. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Something that's going to blow us all out of the water. Or, or they are lying. We'll find out <laughs> and we'll let you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe there was a small line of text saying, you know, footage may not be representative of final gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, that's true. Maybe. That's true. Metopia. Okay. Who expected this? Really? What? No one predicted this. Not a soul. I, I, Metopia. <laughs> it's not a sequel. <laughs> this is a remake no, of the 3DS just, game. Just, it's just Metopia. It has no right. It has no right looking this good. Like I, I, it I, looks really yeah, good. If, if you, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but it, I had like some bravely default vibes going on with the backgrounds because they're just there was so much life in them and they were so sharp. It, it was. It was weird, but I was like, I'm way more excited about this game now than I ever was on the 3DS. And maybe it's because we mm -hmm. don't have things like Street Pass now, which I loved Find Me or the um the RPG on, on Street Pass, uh, the Me Plaza so much. And it seems like, like I never played the 3DS one, but it seems like this game is kind of based off of some of that framework i guess if you want to say but yeah it's got that it's got that personality and taste in there i i did play metopia on 3ds and i i mean i, I didn't i didn't dislike it but i didn't have the strongest impression mm -hmm. so i'm just curious are they are they going to turn this around strongly to make it a really good game because my, my impressions right, right now were just kind of it was all right but i guess we'll see yeah we'll we'll see i'm sure it's i can't say that i'm like mega gagging to play this game but at the same time i'm intrigued to see more of it I, you know i've heard very good things about it as an rpg it's quite simple but surprisingly deep and it's got kind of um oh what's it called that other one uh T T tomodachi life vibes mm -hmm. to it as well to a degree so yeah. and i i quite enjoyed that but uh, we'll see. I think that's part of it for me, too, is like just seeing that Nintendo is bringing over a game that has such a big focus on Miis again just excites me because I, I feel like we just got or we were drowning in that kind of content on 3DS and the Wii and the Wii U not so much. But now that we don't really see Miis utilized as much on Switch, it, it kind of was like I hate to use the word. But it was kind of nostalgic. Sure, I, I <laughs> and feel that. It doesn't even feel that long ago, you know. Like yeah, and you know this this kind of makes a stand that 3DS games can be remade too, because we've been we've had Wii U port after Wii U port, but there's such a large library on 3DS that could potentially come over to Switch too, like a link between worlds. Imagine that with this kind of visual upgrades, mm -hmm. or or Samus Samus Returns. There's so many great games that'd be a great fit for the Switch, but they chose to do Metopia first. <laughs> 
I, I didn't catch the developer, but imagine if this is like Grezzo's new project. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's kind of medieval, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So the next thing was um, Mario items in Animal Crossing, which we we've known about for a while, but we this is the first time we're seeing them. There's a great deal of variety here. You know, there's some fun stuff to interact with. I think the big thing we need to talk about though, blooming functional warp pipes that's that's i mean it's i mean it's not it's not like completely un unspeakably amazing but it's it's just it allows so many more different things for animal crossing islands people have already done ridiculous stuff imagine what people are going to do now it's kind of wowzers trousers that's when i changed my tune because i i looked at this stuff and i went okay new leaf had this with the fortune cookies mushrooms aren't new stars aren't new blocks aren't new and then they got in the warp pipe and i was like okay i'll take everything back <laughs> <laughs> nintendo's slowly been like drip feeding all of this content to us but now i'm glad to see that they're introducing new mechanics into the game because like you were saying alex this brings up so many different possibilities for people to make uh unique item or uh, unique islands through the uh the dream server mm. and uh just the possibilities with with that are uh are pretty exciting it's hopefully some people do some cool stuff with it then they said hey remember that we released super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury last week and they were like i was like oh are they gonna announce something new for that and they were like we hope you enjoyed that game <laughs> So, Haven't okay. you sold enough copies, Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> so that was um, that was a thing. Yeah. Was there some kind of hypnosis in there? Do you think? Like, were they just there was there was like a subliminal message coming up saying, "Buy Bowser's Fury <laughs> again. Buy a copy for your friend. Buy a copy for your uncle. Buy a copy for your dog." <laughs> uh, Project Triangle Strategy. I'm they have sorry. fun with these titles. <laughs> that title is just ludicrous. It's just that name. I I get why the where the title comes from, but it's just nonsense. <laughs> it um, is I, pretty, I'm really yeah. I'm really excited for this game. They they definitely showed it for too long. Just the idea of another Octopath inspired game. But on a different genre, I think that's exciting. So they could do Octopath 2, but that would kind of, you know, it, it bumps shoulders with Bravely Default 2. Whereas this, this feels like something really fresh. And Square haven't done a tactical RPG in a long time. So it, it's nice to see them do it again. My mind was absolutely melting about the, the graphical style and just the, the, the choices that you have, how there's that scale that you, it seems like you kind of like run around and talk with the townsfolk and kind of figure out an opinion on how people feel about things. And then that can determine how the story plays out. It just like, it seems to me, I kind of fell off Octopath super quick, but this has way Way more of an intriguing uh, gameplay hook to me than that did. And I, like I said, I love turn-based RPGs. So I'm very excited about, what is it called again, Alex? Triangle <laughs> Survey Project something? Project Triangle Strategy. Oh, yes. They call a square a square. Uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm not necessarily feeling this. Um, like you, Zion, I fell off Octopath really quickly, and I liked it at first, but I can't get on with the art style anymore. I find it... Ah, oh, that's my favorite uh, part! I know, I know, <laughs> and I know so many people love it, but by the same token, there are loads of people, myself included, who love the new Link's Awakening art style, and loads of people who it just doesn't gel for them, and I think uh, that's this kind of situation with me. It just It just doesn't do it for me. And I really fair. like tactical RPGs, but I feel like... I feel I don't, I don't feel like I've played them all, but I feel like every time I pick a new one up, I feel like I'm playing the same game again. Mm, so sure. I, I'd I'd love to be surprised by this. I really would, and I I'm willing to give it a chance. But watching the you know the introduction and everything in the direct, it it didn't get my heart pumping. I'm afraid to say. I'm into it. I'm feeling it. If you compare this to Fire Emblem Three Houses. I mean, I know Fire Emblem was, it has a great story. I haven't played that much either. <laughs> and, that, and that's okay. But even just like the graphical intensity, like if you were to take any screenshot from that triangle strategy game and you, you were to frame it on a wall, that's just a piece of art. But so much of the, the art style of the battles in, fi in something like Fire Emblem, it's just so bland and boring. And you, you see it so much that uh, I, I think I just got bored over time. You know, you're, you're always fast forwarding battles. And I think this game has the potential for you to kind of sit back, soak in the environments. And that's part of the, hopefully that'll be part of the joy of playing the game. 
But um, but I've spoke enough about I've spoken enough about it. John, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, I just want to say that I'm really positive on this. And I, I as you were saying, Zion, the graphical um, level of graphical fluidity looks really good. Like games, as you're saying, games like Fire Emblem, they sort of change their art style depending on where you are in the game. It's like when you're on the field, it looks it looks all right, and then you get into battle and it looks even better. Whereas this looks good all the time. Mm-hmm. And like those battle effects, like when you're actually hitting someone, it looks fully animated, and um, it looks like they're putting a lot of effort and polish into the animations. And visuals so i am i am into this it, it reminds me of final fantasy tactics and that's kind of a lost turn on this genre like that kind of that that, that sort of like floating grid based platform that we don't see very often now so I, i'm excited to see the return of that yeah yeah that's true that's true the next game that they showed basically nothing of was star wars hunters <laughs> a free-to-play <sighs> third-person shooter coming to Nintendo Switch in 2021. Hard to have an opinion about this considering they showed literally no gameplay. Did either of you two- Who was it made by? Yeah, did you see it's made by Zynga? I I might be pronouncing that wrong. Zynga? What the- Yep. I, I, what did they make? I can't remember. Mobile but games. They, I think- they, Yeah. I don't, are they the Farmville people? They like, might I'm look, be. I, I think so. Farmville has become- Farmville Star Wars on Nintendo Switch. It might it, it, it might be great though. Who knows? We saw some lightsabers. It's a, um, I think there's a Mandalorian in there. It, and yeah, it's in space. Maybe no one has an impression of this game. Even, even <laughs> the the most diehard Star Wars fan watched this trailer and said, "Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't form anything." Knockout City. This I'm. <laughs> I think it was it was quite an original way to do a trailer, but I did feel that I got confused about what the game was supposed to be, and then it showed the gameplay footage, and it was like, oh, so it has very little to do with what the characters <laughs> you spent half the trailer showing off are. It's just like avatars running around playing dodgeball, essentially. Yeah, the 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 intro trailer too really kind of makes it look like like I got Fortnite vibes, or like it felt like I was watching a scene in Wreck It Ralph, but it wasn't as wait was Wreck It Ralph by Pixar? I don't know. That's pretty off topic. Disney. Okay, but it wasn't animated by Disney, you know. But yeah, if you guys have anything else to say, I've spoken quite a bit on this game because I actually got to play it a little early, and now we have a hands on preview up on the good old YouTube Nintendo Life channel that you can go check out if you want to learn more. But I I had a good time with it. It was pretty fun. I think maybe we should we should encourage people to go there then because you clearly have way more experience with it than we do so <laughs> what we say could be complete nonsense that's true that's true so go, go and watch that video <laughs> do it and do it now do it after this video after this video yes or, after or, or you can after. pause <laughs> this one and you can world's end club <gasps> Yes. I don't know what this game is. I, I don't no know idea. either. I don't know. But it's made by, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's made by the team that made Danganronpa and the Zero Escape series, which did like right. 999, Virtue's Last Reward, and it's a match made in heaven. It's the the dream teams coming together to form a new dream team. It's it's like, a, what's what's it called when a bunch of uh, band members from other bands come together to write an album? It's like that. A super but for band. Like, yes, a super band. You got it, Alex. It's that, but with video games and the slight mystery novel, horror, anime genre, I guess. <laughs> It's it's a really weird genre for these developers to tackle too, because the, the, the character the character designs look a lot like Danganronpa, and then it gets into the gameplay, and it's like whoa 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 this this looks really interactive, which is kind of strange for these games. So it, yeah, it looks bizarre, but I'm totally in for this. Did either of you guys too think that at first it kind of looked like a Pokemon spinoff either, or am I wrong? Because I I thought the art like that <laughs> that was the vibes that I got from the art style until things got darker. Then I was like, okay, nope. That's that's not it. <laughs> I, I can't I can't say I did. I'm afraid Zion. No. <laughs> that's all right. Well, if if anyone else felt that, l- let us know. <laughs> There's got to be some person out there. <laughs> Hades is getting a physical version. That's that's pretty cool. I still haven't played the game yet. Now I've got another excuse to spend more money on it than I need to. Hey, you can spend your money on a tangible item. <laughs> yeah, you can do just that. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. I have never played any of the, for lack of a better term, modern Ninja Gaiden games. I think I had a demo on Xbox 360 and I remember it being a lot of uh, quick time events and not a lot else. Um, But obviously it was a demo. I don't think I even got very far in the demo itself. 
So I, I certainly don't think I have a fair representative idea of the game. I am incredibly in for a third of this. <laughs> I I adore Ninja Gaiden 1. That's one of my favourite games in the genre. It still holds up today. I, I was playing the first one again on Series X, and it, it looks incredible still. Um, it's just so much fun, and it's it really is one of the best the genre can do. 2 and 3? Like, 2's alright. 3 is not that great. <laughs> but I would say it is worth buying this collection just for the first game, because it is, it is that good. I remember it, it being known as one of, like, the... It was, like, the Dark Souls kind of of that time period. Not not in gameplay necessarily-wise, but the difficulty level. Like, oh, you think you're cool? You should you should try Ninja Gaiden on Xbox. And, uh, and I was terrible at it i don't i think i made it to the second or the third level and then i was done <laughs> also i know it's really hard to not bring this sort of stuff up like you guys kind of uh not that you struggled with it but every time something cool popped in your brain you went hey maybe uh that character will come to smash now and that's that's how i felt with this was Happens finally every time <laughs> yeah <laughs> people are always talking about ryu right yeah. every time any game is announced ever people go whoa what, what if it comes to smash <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it will. I don't think. I don't think release is any indication of Smash characters. No, That's fair. sadly. The next item was Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity expansion pass, and I thought, oh, we get so to see funny. some new characters. <laughs> no, it was just announcing the expansion pass. Did, um, did they even? There's no voiceover. They no. had like a PowerPoint slide on the screen for like. For, didn't, it didn't it wasn't even on the screen for long enough to read it. No, it faded away before you can get halfway down the screen, and then it went. Well, next thing. All I got to read that was the pre-order bonuses for the expansion pass. I don't even know what's in it. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> to be fair, the details are pretty sparse. It just says Wave 1 available the uh, June 2021. Expanded roster, new weapon types, new challenges in ancient uh, Royal Ancient Lab, newly added challenging enemies, Wave 2 available November 2021. New character vignettes, which I don't understand. Okay. Uh, newly added stages, expanded roster, new battle skills for existing characters, $19.99. Why announce this? <laughs> Why announce this if you can't show it? I, I don't get I it. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can pre-order it now. <laughs> maybe that's. I feel bad pre-ordering. I, I I wouldn't pre-order something not knowing what it is. I think you should wait. Yeah. If and if you're a die-hard Hyrule Warriors fan, I, then I guess you're you probably made it, made up your mind already. But I would advise wait until they show it. They showed off bravely default two briefly as well, which we already know oh, yeah. an awful lot about. One final push. I think they I think they even called this actually the <laughs> the final trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they started talking about Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, which uh, can I think the game is just unimaginably ugly, and <laughs> it takes a lot for me to really dislike, like really, really dislike an art style. Like I can still appreciate Octopath Traveler; it's just not my cup of tea. But this, I just think, is uh, it hurts me. It does do you think you would like me. it better if it was just stat? Like, do you think it's the motion? Because the motions, like, it, it kind of gives off like a mobile game vibe to me it's the and motion I, just tweens not, yeah 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 he's animated like he's a puppet but oh, he's not sure a puppet. yeah so it's, it's really weird uh, it, it hurts me too because i'm a huge ghouls and ghosts fan that's one of my favorite games of all time and i think this this gameplay wise i think this looks really good i think there, there's a lot of great elements in here but it's hard to appreciate it because it just doesn't look the part then we got saga frontier remastered and this is where they've taken pixel art and tried to smooth it out, and it looks a bit weird. I was overly surprised by how well... I believe this is also a PS1 title. I think the first and second came out on there, and I, I'm, so I'm not sure if this is a collection or not, but in comparison to playing, like, um, I think it was, like, Final Fantasy VII and maybe VIII, I swear that some of those games, they lost some of the resources or, like, you know, the original art, the, the files. And this game looked... I mean, like, like you said, Alex, they were smoothing a lot of stuff out, but it looked clean. Like, it looked clean enough that it wouldn't give you maybe the worst headache to play it. Um, and I'm not saying that Final Fantasy did that, but I didn't, um, I was surprised by how how cleaned up this looks. Yeah, Final Fantasy was jarring because you had like, you had like 240p backgrounds with 1080p character models and it, it, it doesn't look great. Uh, I think, yeah, this is probably the best they can do with what they have. Um, hopefully, though, whenever they do this kind of thing, I always hope there's an option, like just to turn off smoothing. Yeah. I, I don't think it looks terrible. I have seen worse, oh, but uh, I do hope there's an option. There's definitely worse. I think uh, some of the... Uh, do I, I, 
don't want to say the Dragon Quest games. I, I, no, sorry, no, it was the Final Fantasy games that they released on mobile. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were ugly. They were yeah. ugo, ugo. ugo. It's weird ugo. to see so many, like, it'd be different, I think, too, if this came in a direct that didn't already have so many RPGs, too. But we're, mm. we're comparing it now here to, I'm not going to list them, but there were already like three or four that we talked about that look better than this, you know? And it's it's hard to, because, you know, if, if you have tri Project Triangle Square plus X coming out, you know, with a, a demo soon, why would you play Saga Frontier, whatever, when you have this instead? I don't know. That I, I feel like that makes it hard to uh, to be excited about it. But but there will be somebody that's like, yes, I won today. <laughs> Finally. Apex Legends. That's coming to Switch. We've known about that for a long old time. It was just a, hey guys, it's still coming, uh, which was... <laughs> Fine. And this was definitely using Switch footage. You can tell that like, it looks a little blurry, but at the same time, it looks like they're still maintaining the visual uh, fidelity, which is good. It looks like they're they're prioritizing gameplay over over visuals. And then Mr. Jim John, he got it right. Skyward Sword HD. You got this so right. You even got oh. it down to the right stick being used for this for the motion <laughs> controls. You were bang on. Oh, it's a, you know, I, I love that they're giving you the option. I feel like if they just replaced motion, you would lose something. Because Skyward Sword is definitely built around that. I, I hope that combat's still fun with the sticks, but I, I personally, I'm going to be sticking with motion for this one. I'm really glad that they have the option too. And I like, so it's been forever since I played Skyward Sword, and I, I'm maybe for you guys as well. And I know, Alex, you said you didn't play it a ton, but... I don't recall, I mean, that, that right stick should basically be free doing nothing else since whenever you're going to need it, you should probably be realistically targeting an enemy. So it sounds like it could be a little wonky, but it sounds like maybe the best the best thing they could do. And so I, I'm excited to try it out. Yeah. I didn't really like Skyward Sword a ton back in the day. I, it just felt like I put it down for a while and then and eventually, like I forced myself to come back to it and I, I had a good time, but, but I've definitely enjoyed more Z other Zelda games more, so. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite Zelda, because it, it, it isn't, it, by far it isn't, but I've played it, I've played it through to completion a couple of times, and there's definitely things they could fix, and I was hoping they would address them in this direct, but um, I guess one big thing is that there's gonna be camera control, like, because the first game you just had Z targeting to oh, uh, sure. sort of reframe the camera, but now we can move it around, so that's really cool. Can we though? Because um, the I, right stick is gonna be for the motion controls. I think that's just when you're locked on. Okay. I think they, 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 said, they said that's just when you're locked on to an enemy. But uh, may, may, maybe there's differences. Okay, I can I, I can deal with that. But then what if you need to swipe your sword? Oh, you could do a quick swipe anyway, couldn't you, in the original? That's right. There's definitely other things they can fix too, though. Like, they can get rid of some tadpoles during the big swimming section. Um, they can tighten up the pacing a lot. Because Skyward Sword has weird pacing, and there's definitely a lot of things they can do to sort of help with that. They also add 60 frames a second. Oh, really? Oh, is this I didn't know they specified that. Well, that's cool. the footage was all 60 frames a second. Well, that's that's interesting because both Wind Waker and Twilight Princess weren't on Wii U. No, that was um that that was what threw me at first. I mean, I assume it wasn't an error, and it was running on some sort of like souped-up dev unit or even a computer or something. But yeah, I imagine Nintendo were pretty careful with this sort of thing. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. I, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, it doesn't look like a huge visual overall. No. The lighting doesn't look like Wind Waker HD lighting. This seems far more in line with Twilight Princess HD. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I guess it makes sense. It's a Wii game. And no Wind Waker, no Twilight Princess. Those are the games I well, really want to replay, not... Uh, Not no. Skyward Sword. I mean, I know, I know, people are happy for this, it. This They're... is something new, though, Zeon. We've we've had those games on Wii U. Ah, this is but this is a I new didn't port. play them myself, <laughs> and now I'm tearing down the city. <laughs> no, no Twilight right. Princess right. for Little John. No Wind Waker for Little Zeon. <laughs> Oh, and uh, I guess one one big thing though, this is you know this is the the first direct of the year. This is Zelda's thirty fifth anniversary. There's probably going to be more as the year goes on. Fingers crossed. And now that you mentioned that too, did they say anything about the the anniversary itself? Did they acknowledge no. it? No. That's they, weird. they were just like, hey, Skyward Sword HD later. <sighs> That's basically it. Are we gonna? Oh, and the Joy-Con and the special edition Joy-Con. Oh, yeah. Joy-Con do look sweet. They look very nice. Okay, now the final thing, right? I just want to know you two. What were your, what did you think it was when you first saw the opening shots of the arid landscape with like the ruined trains and the rusty barrels and cars? What did you think we were looking at? Okay. 
I didn't know. I looked at this and I just thought, <laughs> what on earth is this? It wasn't until I saw the sort of draped over character that I was like, oh my god, this is what it is. But, but Zeon, did you have any idea? Uh, no, I, I, not a hint. Uh, the only thing is I, my brain latched onto Borderlands. Like, I was like, no, that's, that would not happen. They wouldn't close out a direct with Borderlands. And then, you know, I did the same thing where... I eventually realized it was, you know, what it was. But Alex, did you have any, any ink, uh, any inklings of what it was? Oh, I thought it was Borderlands as well. <laughs> oh, nice! I, I, I didn't think it was actually Borderlands, but my first thought was Borderlands, yeah. but with a big, big old question mark at the end. And then when it came to the character, the hooded character, that wasn't what gave it away. It was the little salmonid next to them, and I was like, oh, because yeah, it's Splatoon three. And you know what else we got? Post-apocalyptic. Yeah. <laughs> this is so post-apocalyptic. Well, potentially post-apocalyptic, or is it... it I mean, it's in France, <laughs> which you can tell, um, because there's the Eiffel Tower upside down. Oh, uh, in, at one okay. Point. It, it, I mean, potentially it's post-apocalyptic, but it looks like they're really trying something different. I mean, the idea that Paris, just as a concept, would be an arid desert is kind of a bit terrifying, but... You know, sort of the setting and everything, it looks really interesting. There was a weirdly long shot of the inkling on the train. Um, that was all well and good, but then when we actually saw some gameplay, what are they doing? They have, they seem to be changing so blooming much. Well, obviously they're not overhauling, but, you know, like, you start off the match on, like, these floating things, and then you you can, like, throw yourself off them. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm guessing it's so you don't all necessarily just start on the same spawn point, but they're bringing back the Ink Zooka as well. I happen to notice that. There's there's so much we need to come through here. There's so much. There's a crossbow. There's a crossbow oh, you're carrying in the desert Is it a crossbow? Section. I thought it was a longbow. Or maybe it's a longbow. Oh, sure, Some, something along sure. those lines. But a, but a bow, bow. regardless. <laughs> a bow! What a, what a direction to take. I hope they go weird with this, because we have Splatoon 2 on the Switch. We have, we, we have our own Splatoon Platoon right there. We can go crazy now. We can do daring things. And you know, looking at that desert footage, it's weirdly open. Like, so it kind of came to me like, what? What if this is like an open world campaign? I would love that so much. Everything's got to be open world. Well, in, in Splatoon, so I played. I was one of like, I feel like I was one of the few that played the Splatoon two campaign, and I enjoyed the levels a lot. But that is kind of what I felt like was lacking was just sort of the the world building and the story of the game. I mean, it was there was there was some of it, but it would be so much fun to just go romp around through a, a real world and discover I don't know just gear and and interact with more NPCs. I would love that so much. And I thought I like read or heard something about two that. Um, did something super bad happen in one of the last Splatoon Splatfests as well? Yeah. So is, is so Chaos won. Okay. It was between Chaos and Order. Hey. And yeah, Chaos was the victor. So would that have any if like so the desert area that we're in, could that potentially be where Splatoon 2 took place? Or is that like a very out there thought? Like um because I don't it's hard to say because Splatoon 2's campaign was impacted by Splatoon 1's Splatfest. Okay. Because that, that was between the two Squid Sisters, which directly impacted the story. This seems to be doing much more than just the story. I mean, I oh. suppose it may come into it, but I think there's so much just in the small clip, clips that we've seen that maybe it deserves a video of its own. Well, what are you up to tomorrow, John? Well, I guess we'll see. They lied to us, though. They <laughs> said this Direct will consist of games that are releasing in the first half of 2021. Yeah! They broke that rule really early on, and they definitely broke it with this game because it's coming out in 2022. <laughs> Bonkers, and they were like existing games, and it's like you mentioned what Hyrule Warriors and Smash. It's right, that was about right. it. <laughs> so there's def we're, we're going to see this game a lot over the next year. So this is this is definitely a little taste, and I, I we're going to see more of the campaign. We're going to see more of the multiplayer. But I, I'm just looking at it right now, and it it really does seem like they are pushing the boat out with what they can do with Splatoon. But yeah, I mean, I, I need to see more of this game. Quick roundup then. Highlights, guys? I don't know about you guys. Like, I loved the, the tactical RPG. I really did. Uh, Metopia, like, you know, caught me off guard. But this, I think it I think it made my heart happy the most. So this was a really good direct for me. It opened with Pyro and Smash, which is something I have wanted for a while. And then there's a lot of, like, just little games that I want, I want on the Switch. Like, Ninja Gaiden 1 on the Switch is really nice. The sequel to Octopath Traveler is really nice. Um, we've got a bunch of PS1 games, which are also really nice. And then Mario Golf. I, oh, I'm so excited for that. I guess if you went into this expecting, you know, the next Odyssey, the next Kirby, the next Donkey Kong, I can see why you'd be disappointed. This wasn't, like, the, the most megaton-filled direct in the world. 
But it does have a lot of little nice things, and then it ends with Splatoon 3. So, a pretty good one for me. I'd say definitely the highlight for me. When I first started watching it, I was like... Generally, my feeling was sort of, this is fine, but I didn't feel, and this this is going to sound entitled, but I, I really just mean it in a purely objective way. It didn't feel catered towards me. Once again, I'm not saying it should be, but, uh, you know, there were games here, lots of games featured, good games that just weren't really my thing. So I was a bit, I certainly wouldn't say I was disappointed, but I was just, I was fine. I was ticking along. Then we got Mario Golf Super Rush, and that was a, that was a, I, I, I'm fairly certain I did just go like, oh, Mario Golf, and uh, my partner <laughs> Sasha just went, yeah, it's, it's Mario Golf, didn't understand, that looks fantastic, really pleased to see more No More Heroes 3, and then it kind of dropped off a little bit, Metopia was interesting-ish, but there were a lot of games that weren't really like, properly grabbing my attention. And then they finished it off with Splatoon 3, and that's just... <laughs> I, I didn't... I did not think that when they said we're, you know, sort of final thing we're going to announce, I thought, oh, you know, is it going to be... I thought maybe it would be something like, you know, maybe they were also bringing Wind Waker HD or something, or Twilight Princess HD, you know, is maybe like, hey, you buy Skyward Sword, you get this as well or something, I don't know. And then it was just like, Hey, Arid Desert. Oh, there's an inkling. And I was just like... <laughs> and the fact they brought the Salmonids back, that's that's like the best thing for me. And, and I customize it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's one thing that I, I did forget about um, that kind of like clicked in my brain is that, you know, you see this inkling in the desert and it's like, wait, inklings probably can't survive in the desert. Like they need... They're ink and they, do they need water? I don't know. I feel like they do. This is they dissolve they, they in water. They can't have water, That kills them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. So, well, I need to play more. See, I need more of the lore. Okay, <laughs> but it, it just felt it felt wrong. And when like when some something snapped in my brain and, and got me so excited about that, they were just they're just doing stuff that we we didn't expect, and it was nice. And I do have one thing that I did want to actually say too is that you know you guys mentioned how it's been like 500 some days or something since we've had the last real authentic direct and i and for me i mean i, I completely understand how a lot of people feel like you know we didn't get anything of donkey kong or metroid you know like you were saying but for me this was kind of like what I was reminded about what a Nintendo Direct is like, and I don't even think, I'm not trying to come from a Nintendo fanboy perspective, you know, there were just a lot of things that surprised me and, and catered to me. And I'm so excited for the next Direct to happen, and hopefully I get to take a backseat and everybody else, you know, gets taken taken care of, and there'll, there'll still be things for me, but this this gives me hope that we're going to see more of these, you know, more often, hopefully again soon. That's nice. I was going to say, that's very well said, Zeon. Well, thanks. Well, that about sums up our views, and according to the, the raw recording, at the very least, before we trim out the bits in the middle, we've gone on longer than the direct itself, which is um, oh, no. predictable. But um, thank you so much for watching. Please do let us know your thoughts about the direct in the comments down below, and thank you so much for watching. I've already said that. Um, if you like this video, then why don't you absolutely lose your blooming mind over subscribe button three and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Splatoon 3. Oh! Oh!